Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make this little cat. Um, it's actually a really easy pattern. And I'm going to show it two ways. This way is going to be the easy way if you don't mind sewing. If you like sewing, then this will be your method. Um, you'll do the tail and the head and the body all separate. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But then I'm going to do another version where it's all in one piece and the only thing you should have to sew up is this bottom area here. That's it. So let me get started. So you need a 24 peg loom. Okay. And you need a yarn that goes to the equivalent of a 24 peg loom. So you can make this on any 24 peg loom. You are not um, having to do it on this particular gauge that I have. This is a fourth inch gauge, if you're interested. I like the really small gauges because I like doing like really small animals. Um, I think they're really cute. But you can do this on a regular gauge. You can do it, you know, it's fine. All right. So we're going to start the body. And actually chain cast on. So short side. Lay over. Push away from yourself, stick your thumb up in there, and grab the working yarn, pull through. Slip knot. If you know how to do a slip knot, then you don't need that. Alrighty. So, we're going to do a chain cast on. And what you want to do is you want to wrap that around the first peg. Okay. And you can tighten it a little bit, but I want to. Grab the working yarn and pull through that loop you just made. Okay. So this is called a chain cast on. And trust me, you want to do a chain cast on. You want to make life easy on yourself when it comes to seeing how to sew it on. And I'm going to explain how all that's going to work. Okay. So you're going to chain cast on. And this is not going to be in the round. This is going to be flat. Okay. So you're going to chain cast on all the pegs, and this works the same with that intermediate version. Okay. I'm going to be doing it on even smaller than on that one. Okay. chain cast on and this is going to be actually you know really easy square because the body is a square okay And again, this is a pattern that is good for um, scrap yarn. You know, you put your loop there. Okay, good for scrap yarn. I uh, I really like this pattern as it's fun for scrap yarn. And if you use a smaller gauge loom, you can make little key fobs and stuff. So it makes it fun. All right. So all you're going to do is you're going to knit for 30 rows. Okay, so you cast on 24 pegs and you knit for 30 rows. All right, so I'm just going to knit my way over, and what you're going to do is you're going to want to slip the first stitch of each row, and I'll show you what that means. And because you've just done a chain cast on, it gives you an easy chain to sew from, and you want to do that on the side, and I'll show you how that's done. Okay. All right, so you've knit your last peg. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to slip the first stitch. And what slipping the first stitch does, get that out of the way, is you're just going to skip it. You're going to take it behind. Okay, so here's your 
you're going to just take it behind. You're just not going to knit it. And then you're going to go in and you're going to just knit your way around. Okay. And you're going to do those for 30 rows. Okay. So you'll want to pause the video, complete 30 rows of knit back and forth. And then you will bind off. Okay. As I said, this is going to be the easy version, but you're going to do a lot more sewing. If you don't want the sewing version where you have minimal sewing to do, where you're just sewing up the body, then you'll need to go to the intermediate version. Okay. Alrighty. So, and then you knit that last peg and to slip it is to simply go behind it and start on the next peg. See? All right, so pause the video, get your 30 rows done, and then we can move on. Okay, <clears throat> here's your 30 rows, and we're ready to bind off. So what you want to do is knit that stitch, take it back one, pass the bottom loop over, and move it over. For me, switch hands. <clears throat> so you knit the second stitch and you take it back one, you toss the bottom loop over, and then you move it over one. This is how you bind off. Knit the second stitch, put the stitch up, move it to the previous peg, toss the bottom loop over. Simple, basic bind off. You're going to bind off all of your stitches. Okay. And then we'll be ready to start on the head. Okay. So go ahead and complete your bind off. All the way to the end. And then I'll come back and show you how to start working on the head of your cat. Okay, so pause the video, finish binding off, and we'll come back. Okay, <clears throat> I'm finishing this off, and I'm going to cut kind of a long tail so that I can just sew it on from the tail. Okay. <clears throat> you should have a nice, neat little square. So, should be a nice square. If you want it to lay flatter, then you do a knit a row, curl a row to do a garter stitch. But this does what I want it to do. Okay, then we're going to put that to side and we're going to start on our head. We're going to do a drawstring cast on. We're going to do it in the round. So I tend to kind of hold the working yarn back a little bit. As you can see, I wrap to the front of that first peg back. Front, back, front, back, front, back, front, back. All the way around, weaving it in and out. And then you'll see why I do it kind of loose there while I pull it back some. So it tosses over nice and neat. Okay? You're going to lay it over and toss every other loop that you just created over. This creates a drawstring cast on. Now you're not going to drawstring it down really tight for the bottom of the head, but you're just going to um, lightly drawstring it because you're not going to need to do a gathered little tie area around the neck like those who are going to do the intermediate version. Okay. All right. Once we get to the beginning again, and here we are. Now. You can look at my notes real quick. I'm pretty sure. Um, we're going to do 14 rows, I think. 
where you just knit around for 14 rows and then you'll um, do a regular bind off okay so go ahead and pause the video and complete your 14 rows okay and then we will come back and we will bind off okay so pause the video complete your 14 rows and then we'll come back okay you can see you got your 14 rows here you're ready to bind off and you're just going to do a regular bind off so you're going to knit that first peg and the second peg you're going to take that second peg that second stitch back to the first peg and toss the bottom loop over okay then you're just going to knit the second peg take it back the bottom loop over okay so this is just the same process as we did with the body it's just going in the opposite direction so just toss that over okay so you want to go ahead and bind off all your stitches and on the last peg on the last stitch I'll show you a little trick so you don't have a gap okay so go ahead bind off so pause the video bind off and then you know I'll show you how to finish off and then I'll show you how to do the tail real quick okay now typically you would just pull on through but a lot of times there's a gap that shows up in your um, knitting what you want to do is you want to find that first notch which is right there I don't know if you can see that with the whole light but you want to find that first notch you don't have to do this but it removes that gap that you got going on there and you just find that first notch and you're just going to put it onto the peg toss that bottom loop over and then I just wrap again and toss and that removes that gap again you'll want to do a nice long tail so that you can sew up the top of the head All right. so just stretch that out so this is the top of your head okay and you'll end up drawstringing this a little bit not a whole lot just enough to Give you a nice little cinched head looking thing going on here okay okay so something a little like that you just kind of spread out your gather and then what you'll do is you're going to sew that up and you can see the start of your head okay now you need to knit your tail super easy you're just going to go in and you're going to e-wrap the two and then um, just kind of do like a little figure eight so just wrap around and wrap around toss toss okay I think this is the third row you want to do like 20 so four five six and then seven Eight. Nine. Somebody attached it. Okay. Nine. Ten. Twelve, 
13. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So twenty rows. And then you can take that second stitch, move it over to the first, cross the bottom, loop over. And what I like to do to create a knot is to wrap it one, two. Don't need a long tail on that one. And what you should have is a tail. I know you wouldn't have a knot there, but <laughs> this is scrap yarn, so there. Now, that should be a pretty good knot. And what I like to do on something like this, because it's a tail, is you should be able to cut it pretty close. Okay, so there's your tail, and all your parts are now knit. Okay. So here we are, we're ready to sew up. All right, so we're gonna put those to the side. We're gonna start on our body, all right? So you just go ahead and get your needle set up. Okay, so here's the thing. This is a square, all right? And you're gonna be kind of Figuring out where your halfway marks are, okay? So you fold it like that. So your halfway mark, you may want to mark it with a little thing. So you fold it in half and you find your halfway mark. Okay. So, and then you fold this in half. Find your halfway mark here. Don't want to mark it. Okay, so now you know you need to take this halfway mark and this halfway mark and sew it together to that point. Okay, now here's where the chains are going to be helpful. So now find your chain. Alright, so you're going to find your chain and find your chain. I can show you this. Okay. So you have chains, you find your chain, you try to chain, send your needle through. Okay. And then you just you're just gonna keep going on finding your chains. Okay. Find your chain, find your chain. And you're gonna sew, and it keeps an even stitching is the other great thing about doing this method. Okay. And that's what you want. You want a nice even stitch. Chain, chain. Okay. And you're going to just sew like that all the way to your little markers here. Okay. You're just looking for your chain, looking for your chain. It aligns with the opposite side of it. Okay. Okay, and you're just going to sew your way to the halfway mark. Okay. Just going to move those out of the way. Okay. Chain, chain. We're almost to our halfway mark, and we're going to need to switch up. Okay. Now, here's where we need to switch up. Okay, now we need to take that marker off. Move 
that back. And we need to find the halfway part on this side. Okay. Find our halfway mark here. Go to stitch marker thread. Okay. Now we know we need to make this half mark go to this half mark. Okay. All right. And if you want, you can take that one out because you know where your halfway mark is there. Okay. So then you're going to go and grab that chain. Go through the next chain. Okay. And then you're going to sew down through there. And then once you get that, you can usually take that out. Okay. And you're just going to sew your way to the end here. Okay. And that begins to complete half the body. Okay. Almost. And I'll show you how to work your way down and get to the other side. You shouldn't have to mark so much when you go to the other side. Okay. But you'll see how the benefit of having those chains made it when it came to sewing. You didn't have to go hunting, it keeps it all nice and neat. Now that we've reached our end, we need to come back down so that we can sew the other half. So what I like to do is just stick it through the tip and send the needle down. Okay. Now, you need to find your middle here. Okay. And where is your middle? Okay, so here's how you know what to do now. You're going to start sewing up that side, okay? And um, at some point, you're going to want to go in and um, stuff before you completely finish up your sewing. See, now we can go to the tip here, so we can just go ahead and get started here. And we find our first chain, and send it through that chain. Once you have that established, you can take that out. That's a guide. Now, when you go to do this side, because you pulled it like that, the first couple of stitches keep kind of loose. Alright, All right, now you can start tightening it up again. So follow your chain. Chain. Alright, you just sew your way. The end. Okay. I forgot to get that last one. All right, and then you're going to send it through that center again. Okay. Now, you can go to start sewing, but you need to leave yourself some room 
this stuff. Right. So leave your little pocket space in the middle to be able to stuff your body. Right. So go ahead, and because you pulled it through, leave the first couple of stitches kind of white, then you can tighten it. And if you want, you can kind of shove that in there if you don't have to worry about it, because you're going to send it right back through like we've been doing. All right. Okay. And you can start kind of pulling tight again. And on this section, it may get a little bit more finicky on what you see, but you do the best you can. All right, and add some of that through. Okay, you should have some room to go in and stuff your polyfill in there. And my suggestion is, is to go in and do the best you can, and then you're just going to finish that off. All right. So go ahead and what you want to do is you want to send that yarn through there and you're going to pull it out of the way, not too tight, and then you'll start stuffing. I'm going to show you how to do that. Start stuffing in your corners first. And again, kind of try to send things more to a point if you want. You can find a way to do that. I usually just Roll and push. Okay. The stuffing is an art form. I tell people that all the time. Because right. you need to kind of set it with your foot. You shove it in there, roll it around because your polyfill likes to set itself. So you want to try and set it. All right, now that you've got that, you're going to want to close it up. Okay. And there's your little body. And this is where closing it up is going to show. So you can just kind of go in there. Close it up close to light. And this completes your body. Here's your little body. Alright. And that way you can kind of pull that tight and then make you a knot. Grab it around twice, make you a knot, send it through. You're gonna really like to. I mean, and if you want. You can 
actually send it through wherever you want the tail. Let's say you want to do the tail over here. This tail just needs tying on. So you can just sew your tail on. There she goes. Back. And just sew your tail on. Put your needle through. And then put a knot like that. It shows your tail on real quick. This is where um, sometimes help to have a then you can send it through. Okay, and then sometimes it helps to have a crochet hook where you can go in and grab that tail and pull it through. Okay. Once you get it pulled through, then you can just kind of pull close and pull on a little bit. All right, there's your tail. It's now sewn on. Okay. All right, your head. Take your needle. And you want to find your ends and you're going to follow that chain like you've been doing. Now there's going to be a trick to this. You do chain to chain sewing. But you're going to kind of be pulling a little tight because what you want to create is a little your area so you don't want to do it to where it's all nice and smooth you want to pull it but you want to kind of create a curve okay pull Okay, now here's something that I like to go in and do. Okay, you can you can do little seams that go here to make the ears more prominent. Or you can go in. Okay. And try to do like a little gather there. Okay, it's up to you how you want to do it. Alright, that's what I tend to do is a little gather. So you need to turn it right inside out. And you can kind of do a light weave. Okay, you do a light weave and then you can kind of turn it right side out and you can get create a, a curve there. Okay, kind of curve it up. Okay, now. It's up to you. You can sew the little notches in to make the ears. Entirely up to you. At this point, stuff your head. Put 
The other benefit is it doesn't take much stuffing. Okay, and you can sew your head on. Sew your head on. Now, because we have so much extra here, it's up to you how you want to sew your head on. Um, I'm just sewing on with the string that we've got. Okay. So what I like to do is do like a weaving action in and out to sew on my heads. Okay. If you keep that piece here, maybe you can tie a little bow like I've got on the other one. Keep your weaving going all the way around. Try to stay in. I always have trouble staying in this screenshot when sewing. Okay. Okay, you can wrap that around, that tail that you already had, and you can tie a little bow in the front. And sometimes it's a little fun to get that bow nice and small. And then once you get that bow in there, you can lightly do two half knots. And that kind of keeps it in place. Then you can just snip your ends. Ta-da! These little caps. Okay. There's how you learn it. A easy square cat, okay?